Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. I hope you guys are doing great and I'm definitely feeling a lot better this morning compared to the last couple of days. And so uh, we're going to be taking a look at all that is happening across the Caribbean as well as the latest for Invest 95L which is likely to develop into our next name Storm Lee. So let's go ahead and take a look at all that is happening but before I go into details Please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. Alright, so let us go ahead and get things kick started as we take a look at the satellite imagery. Uh, there we can see our disturbance and a lot of activity in land of Africa that's moving off in association with our next tropical wave. There we have whatever is left off Italia and uh, it should absorb GERT as we head through the early part of this week. And Katia is up there. We can see that it's not looking like anything much. You couldn't even tell that it's actually a tropical cyclone, but it is rapidly weakening and dissipating and out there and so let's uh, briefly zoom into the Caribbean and here you can see that there is some thunderstorm activity popping up across parts of Venezuela, uh, Colombia headed to parts of Central America as well. Uh, even near the Cayman Islands there's that little blob over there of some showers and thunderstorms and for most other areas there isn't anything much happening so uh, it's going to be a rather hot and a sunny morning for most of us here and so now let's go ahead and talk about our disturbance so as we take a look at it on satellite there we can see it it isn't producing a whole lot of activity right now and it's actually being impacted by a bit of wind shear but it is going to be in a more conducive environment very very soon and that should allow for it to just take off in terms of its development and so let us go ahead and now take a look at uh, conditions out there after which we'll be looking at what models have to show so we're starting out with the dry air map and uh, there we can see it so there isn't a whole lot of dry air ahead of it of course there's some and there's that main plume that has now uh, made its way to the Caribbean islands so if you're in the lesser entities you might notice that it's a bit hazy or so uh, due to that Saharan dust but overall there isn't a whole a lot of dry air ahead of the disturbance so that isn't going to be a major issue for it and next we're looking at the wind shear map so the green lines they indicate the areas of conducive shear and it might be a little bit hard to see but there we have the coast of Africa and the Cabo Verde Islands and there we have our disturbance right there and we see that there's a bit of unfavorable shear ahead of it but uh, eventually it should become conducive so uh, wind shear should eventually be conducive we know that the sea surface temperatures are very very warm right now off the charts above average for most of the Atlantic basin so overall conditions look conducive ahead of the disturbance and uh, models such as Euro are expecting that this will become a major hurricane so we're gonna be looking at what the operational models have to show so we're starting out with the Canadian model and so this is as we're going to be heading into the end of this week Saturday the 9th of September and take a look at this those black circular lines we see they're called isobars and they join areas of equal pressure so likely a hurricane that the Canadian model is expecting to make its way into the northeastern islands as we head into Sunday of next week the 10th here we have it being very close to Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands with a pressure of 977 millibars then uh, going on to Monday the 11th that pressure we see 973 millibars is the lowest that this run of the Canadian model is expecting of the system going on to Euro now as we head into Sunday of next week a week from now there we see that pressure of 965 millibars so euro is not expecting that this is going to be as close to the Caribbean compared to the Canadian model and then eventually well north of the eastern islands we see here that by Monday the uh, euro model is expecting a pressure of 945 millibars this is likely a strong cat 3 hurricane that the euro model is expecting here off the system GFS is showing something a little bit uh, different compared to our other models. Uh, GFS is being rather conservative on this one here in the latest runs. So as we head into Saturday, the end of this week, GFS shows the system barely as a tropical storm making its approach to the Caribbean. 
uh, the Caribbean islands and then eventually making its way across the greater Antilles. There we see that area of lots of moisture with nothing defined there and that eventually GFS wants to show that hey this will try to develop and be curving out to sea. So this is very interesting here. Uh, we've got these models. Some of them want to take the system closer to the Caribbean. Some want to take it further away. Let's look at the ensemble members for both GFS and Euro starting out with Euro. So here we have them and the black line is the mean track or the average track of those smaller ones that we see. And when that line is colored in pink, that is representing those major hurricane force winds. So we see that some of these want to take the system very close to the Caribbean as a major hurricane. Others want to keep it offshore and that main track also keeps it offshore. Meanwhile, for the GFS ensemble tracks, we can see that more of these members want to take the system into the Caribbean and overall that average track is a lot closer and this is the track the center of it. So if we're talking about something that is pretty big, a big storm out there, even though the center might stay well offshore, impacts could still be felt. And so if we're in the Northeastern Caribbean, you really want to keep watch, especially in the Leeward Islands, because we just don't know what exactly this thing is going to do. It's just too far out. But as we head throughout this week, there should be a much better picture of what is on the horizon in terms of the track of it, although there will still be some adjustments because uh, that is just how the weather works. It is always changing. And so I've been seeing a lot of comments coming from you guys in parts of the U.S., the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands. Will this, uh, will this be a problem? Well, based on what models are showing now, it seems as though this might not affect Florida, but in terms of the Turks and Caicos Islands in southern Bahamas, the system might move very close to the area. But if we should go back to these ensemble tracks here, we can see that they want to curve it away. So what's going to happen is that there's going to be that subtropical high out there. It should be strong enough to allow for that westward track and then eventually a west-northwestward track. And because it is an area of high pressure, uh, tropical cyclones, they can't just move through them and go out to sea. They have to move along them. So uh, once the system gets gets that opportunity or that leeway to uh, make its way out into the Atlantic, it is going to take it. And that is what we see as the trend for some time now. So hopefully this is actually going to be the outcome. But I would say Northeastern Islands, inclusive of the Turks and Caicos Islands and the Southern Bahamas, should be keeping watch on this. So again, we'll have a better picture of what is ahead of it as we're going to be progressing into the uh, throughout this new week here. And so that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you guys in this update. So again, 95L should eventually develop into our next name storm and eventually a hurricane potentially becoming a major hurricane out there. And so I hope you found this video to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to be otherwise.